Alright then gang, so now we've pretty much done the sign up process whereby we enter in a new email and password we sign up that sends those credentials to the server. The server then takes those and it stores them as a user object in the database. Once we've done that, we then instantly log that user in by creating a JSON web token, sending it back to the browser inside a cookie and we can see that JSON web token if we go to application right here. Okay, so as long as we have this and it's not been tampered with in the browser, then we're considered logged in and that gets sent to the server for every request we make thereafter. Now, we've not handled this on the server yet. When we make those requests to do things like only allow access to logged in users to certain pages, but we'll see all of that later on. For now, what I want to do is quickly switch our focus to the login screen so we can do something similar. So if we go to forward slash login, that looks something like this. So I want to now make this send a request to the server with the credentials we enter in here to log the user in. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, we need to flesh out the front end over here to make that request. But then once we do on the server, we want to take these credentials and then we want to look for that user with that email in the database. Once we've got that user, we want to compare hashed passwords. So we take the password they try to log in with and we hash it and we compare it with the hashed password stored in the database for the user with that email. If they match, it means the password is correct and we can log them in and create that JSON web token for them and send it back to the browser. If it's incorrect, if they don't match, then it means we don't log them in and we send back some kind of error to the user like incorrect password or something like that. Okay. Now, the first step is to flesh out all of the JavaScript for the front end so we can send the request when we click login. Now, this is going to be almost identical to all of this inside the sign up page. So what I'm going to do is actually just grab everything inside this event listener. So let me grab all of this right here and copy it. Then I'm going to go over to the login.ejs page. I'm going to take all of this and delete it. And then I'm going to paste in all of this stuff right here. So when we submit this now, we are first of all setting the text content of the email error and the password error to be blank. We do that every time we make a request. And I forgot we need to grab those from the DOM and store them up here like we did in sign up. So let me copy those as well. Grab them and paste them right here. So these two things are this and this, right? So we're emptying those out every time we try to submit some new data. Then what we do is we grab the values from the inputs. Then we try this thing right here where we're using the fetch API to send a push request to currently sign up. But we want to change this to login, right? Because we're sending a request to the login endpoint instead this time. Now the method is still post. The body that we're sending is the json.stringified version of these two things right here, the email and password, which we grab from the inputs. Then we get a response and we pass that JSON into a JavaScript object called data, which we can use. We're logging that to the console. If there's errors, we're outputting those. If there's a valid user, then we're relocating them to the home page. Now, if this fails, if there's some kind of error with this endpoint, then we're going to catch that error right here. Okay. So that's all working on the front end, but inside the auth controller over here, where we handle this post request to forward slash login, all we're doing is grabbing the request body. We're logging out this email and password and we're sending back this text response. Now we don't want to do that. We want to do a bit more in here. What we want to do is take the user with this email and password and we want to try and log them in. We want to basically take those and compare them with the email and password in the database and then create a JSON web token. Now, it would be nice if we could do something here, like take the user model and do something like this, log in and pass in the email and password. Now, we can't do that. Mongoose doesn't come with the ability to log in users for us. We have to create this method ourselves, but we can do that. We can create this static method on a model when we create a model. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing we need to do is open up the user model over here and we're going to create a static method on this user model. So let me do this comment first of all, static method to log in user. And then we take our user schema and we can say dot statics and then dot whatever we want to call this static method. Now I'm going to create a method called login 
on this user model. So we set this equal to a function and it's going to be an asynchronous function because there will be asynchronous code inside it. So async and then function and we're going to take in the email and password when we call this function. So inside this function, the first thing I want to do is I want to take this email and then I want to look inside our database for a user which might have that email and find that document. So let me say const user is equal to await because this is going to be asynchronous. And inside this static method, we can refer to this to be the user model itself. So not the instance. We don't have an instance. We have the user model. It would be like saying await user. But we're using this to refer to the user model. Then we can use a method called find one on that to go out and try and find one record or one document inside the user's collection in the database. Now we want to base that on the email. So we pass in an object and specify the email of this document we're trying to find it must be the email we pass in. Now because this name and this name are the same, we can shorten this to just email. So this right here, if it finds this user right here, then it will return that user and place it inside this constant. If it doesn't, then it's going to be undefined. So what we want to do then is check, do we have a user? Because if we do have a user, at that point, we want to compare the passwords to make sure the password a user enters in on the login screen is the same as the one stored in the database. Now, if we don't have the user, it means that email does not exist inside the database collection. So therefore, we're going to send some kind of error back eventually to the user that says, look, this email is not a registered email. So at this point, we want to check, does this user exist? So if user, right? Now, if it does exist, at that point, we want to compare the passwords. But if it doesn't exist, then we want to throw some kind of error. So I'm going to, outside here, say throw, and then an error to throw an error. Oops, not an element. Error. And that error is going to have a message, and it's going to be incorrect email, right? So if the user exists, we're going to do something in here and then eventually return so it never gets to this point. If it doesn't exist, it's going to bypass the code inside this block and instead throw an error. And later on, we're going to handle that error over in our auth controller where we handled the other errors at the top. All right. So inside here, if we know there is a user, the next thing we want to do is compare those passwords. Now, how are we going to do this? Because the password that a user enters in is the text password, but the one in the database is the hashed password. We need to compare the hashed password. So we need to hash this as well and then compare it to the hashed password stored in the database. So what we can do is use the bcrypt library or the bcrypt package to do this. Remember, we installed that and required it up here and we use that to generate sol and hash the password earlier on. Now we're going to use a method on this to compare hashed passwords. So all we need to do is say bcrypt and then dot compare and this compare method takes in two arguments. First of all, the password that's not yet hashed. All right, so that's the password that the user has entered. And then what we're going to do is say user dot password. So when we get a user back from the database, we have the hashed password on that and that is in the password property, right? Because we're storing that. If we go to the database, we can see this password property right here and it's the hashed password. So we're comparing the password that a user signs in with or logs in with, with the password, the hashed password stored in the database. Now, it doesn't matter that this isn't hashed because Bcrypt is going to do all of that under the hood for us. It's going to hash it and compare hashed passwords for us. Now, this is asynchronous. So I'm going to say await in front of this and assign the result inside a variable called auth. All right. Now, this will be truthy if this passes and false if it doesn't pass. So we can say if auth right here. And if that's true, it means the passwords have matched. And at that point, I'm going to return the user. So whatever we call this in the future, if everything's successful, if they found the email and the password match, then we're going to return the user. And we'll know at that point, look, we've got a user. They've entered the correct credentials so we can log them in and create that JWT for them. Now, if they don't at this point, if it gets to here and this is false, it means the passwords are not correct. And so what we need to do is throw 
an error instead at this point. So the error I want to throw here is incorrect password, all right? So I hope this makes sense. First, we make sure that email exists, so it checks for a user with that email inside the database. Then, if it is an email inside the database, we try to authenticate them by comparing the passwords. So if that's true, then we return the user. If this is not true, then we return this error or we throw this error. Now, if this user didn't even exist in the first place, then we throw this error, all right? So we created this thing right here. The next thing to do is to use that inside our auth controller down here inside the login post method. So I'm going to get rid of a lot of this right here. And like above, when we try to sign up, I'm going to embed this in a try and catch block. So if there is an error, then it's going to throw the error and we can catch it. So, you know, like we threw errors over here. If when we call this function over here, the login function inside the try block, if there's an error and it throws one of these errors over here, then we're going to be able to catch that right here and then we can handle it accordingly. Okay, for now, all I'm doing inside here is gonna say response.status and 400 to say this is not a success, and then JSON, and we're just gonna send back an empty object. Later, we'll populate this with errors. All right, so what are we actually gonna try? Well, we're gonna try to log in. So I'm gonna say const user is equal to await, and this needs to be asynchronous, this function, in order to do this. Then we're gonna grab the user model, which we have already imported into this file at the top so we can use it. And we're gonna use that static method we just created. And that was called login. So I can log in now and pass in the email and password that they entered and we grab from the request body. So email and password, right? So what's gonna get stored inside this user? Well, if it's successful, then it's gonna be the user that we grab because we try to do it right here. We grab the user. If there's a user, we compare the passwords. If they match, then we're returning that user. The only case where we don't return a user are these two cases where we throw an error and instead we're gonna fire this catch block right here to handle the error. So at this point, we should have the user if this passes. So then we can do something with that user. Eventually, we're going to create a JSON web token for that user and send that back in a cookie but for now, let's just say response.status is gonna be 200, meaning everything okay, and then send back some JSON, and inside here, let's send back the user ID, so I can say user dot underscore ID. All right, so that's from this thing right here that's come from the database, much like we did up here. So that grabs us this ID property, all right? So we're sending that back to the browser now if this is a success and we have that user. If it's not a success, then we're gonna send this back because we catch an error and then just send back a blank JSON object, all right? Phew, so let's give this a whirl. Let's save that, cross our fingers and hope everything works. So what I'm gonna do is just enter in an email. In fact, I'm gonna refresh first because we made some changes to the front end and I wanna capture those changes as well. We have an error over here. Await is only valid in an asynchronous function. Okay, so on the front end, if we go to the login screen, we're using await right here and await right here, but the function itself is not asynchronous. So let me put async in front of that and save it. Okay, so now let's refresh and try this again. Okay, no errors. Right then, so let's keep the console open and try to log in. I need to check what we have as a user over here. All right, so I'm gonna to try to log in as Mario. So Mario at google.com. The trouble is I can't remember the password I used. Let's try test one, two, log in. And yet, did you see that user? We got that user, but then it redirected us straight away to the homepage. Let me just take off that redirect from the front end over here so we can see that. Okay, this is the redirect. I'm commenting that out and I'm gonna go back over here and refresh and try that again. Mario at google.com and test one, two. All right, try to log in and we get that user. So now we've successfully logged in. We've not sent them a JWT yet. And by the way, we still have this one from earlier as well, but don't worry, we'll handle all of this later on. But this has been a success. It's obviously found that user, compared the hashed passwords and decided everything's fine and it sent us the user back, all right? 
Now then, what if there's an error? What if I try to log in with something that doesn't exist, like Mario 1? Well, I get this empty object back, which is what we send back if there is an error. And we can see that right here inside the auth controller. Now, the same would be true if we have a correct email, but we change the password to something that is incorrect. Try to log in, and again, we get back an error, all right? So that's the first step of this login process done. We've now sent the request from the front end over here. We've handled that over here by using this static method login that we created on the Mongoose model right here by saying user schema, which is what we called our schema at the top. And then we said dot statics to access the statics methods. And then we attached this login method to it. This was an asynchronous function, did all of this check for us, compare the passwords, etc., and either throws an error or returns a user. And then we either send back this response, the user ID, if this was a success, or a blank object if there was some kind of error. So that's the first step done. The next thing we need to do in the next video is to, first of all, handle the error a little bit better so we can send that back to the front end. And then secondly, we need to also actually log the user in by creating a JSON web token for them and sending it to the browser. So we'll do that in the next video.